All right, guys, so today I'm going to tell you why the Alumacraft Pro 175 is the best boat for under $20,000 and why its quality is higher than other boats in its price range. So here we go. All right, so for starters, we're going to go with the recessed trolling motor foot pedal. Um, a lot of other boats that I looked at in this price range did not have this, and to me this is huge. This, I hate this trolling motor, this is the one that came with it. I'm going to upgrade eventually, but it's brand new, so I'll uh, use it for a while. I had to put a piece of wood in there to get it actually to sit level, whereas with the other bigger foot pedals it would sit level, but if anybody knows when it, this is sitting there and you're kind of sitting um, with one foot up, it definitely puts a strain on your back when you're doing that for say eight hours a day so huge thing right there that makes a world of difference all right we'll move on now all right so the next thing is going to be the flip up anchor uh, ties because if you ever got caught on these or snapped your rod on one of those definitely nice to have those that flip down and that's what uh, you get with an aluma crack boat all right so now we'll go to the front deck storage. I'll flip this around. So I keep my uh, tackle over here. I got a lot of it out right now because uh, it's winter and I'm restocking everything. But as you can see, it goes way up. I can get it. And I um, actually I'll just stick that in there further. I stick those up as far as I can, and then I ooh, ooh look at that. See all those nice welds and all that uh, aluminum decking because there's no wood on this boat. That's a huge thing. Got way off topic there, but uh, saw those nice welds. Um, quality. Anyways, so we'll get back to uh, over here. Um, so I put, uh, these are 3,700 size um, boxes. I put those there and then I just slide the plastics way up and I'm probably t I might change that because some of them are way up there but usually if I know what I'm going to do I just take it out and then I just lay it right here leave it out here where it's easy access. So now we'll go to the rod uh, storage and there is one thing I don't like about this and I'll explain that. Okay so for the rods we got um like a built-in rod rack and that just honestly is a kind of a hassle it'd be better if that was not in there and you could stack them i don't have that many rods so it works but when i get some more i can see it's going to be an issue because these are actually all riveted in instead of screwed in so i will have to drill them out to take it out but it goes way up there it's got the two different slots on each side and I believe the biggest rod I have in there right now is 7.2 with no issues fitting it. So definitely plenty of room there. Like I said, if you took that out, gosh, you could fit a lot of rods in there. Or you could even do it a lot of guys. And put them in a side locker. So we'll get that closed. Another big, huge thing. So one of the biggest reasons why I bought this boat. And it was crazy to me that other boats... um. I say in this price range, they did not have this. Watertight containers. You're on a boat, you're gonna get wet. Some of us fish in the rain. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, if your stuff is gonna be wet, that's like the worst thing ever. And then, so I mean, it, check it out. <clears throat> because I know other boats in this price range when I was looking, they did not have the watertight seal. Um, but if water does get in here, it does have a drain so there's not one on this side but how it is is it um has like a little channel almost where it'll run there run down through there you can see the holes and then there's a drain hole here so if water does get in there it's going to drain down to your village pump and you're going to be fine and it also has a vent too so that way if it does i uh, can um dry itself out here you know it's not it's sealed, but it still has that air vent, so if water gets in there, it'll be fine. But I have no issues with these getting wet at all. And even um, last year, when I was out um, taking my niece and nephew swimming, and we went up on the front deck and water was all over, these were dry. So, big thing. 
Now we will go to this side. I just have uh, some life jackets in this side. You got your navigation lights here for running at night. But definitely a good size. Stuff is just kind of tossed in there right now. I can actually toss some of this in there. While I am out here. But so that is the front deck. We will uh, go to the back deck then. All right, before I go to the back deck, actually, I'm going to show you the storage uh, underneath the seats. And so we have good storage underneath there. It's got some tools, uh, changing tires, the plug, um, hummingbird cards. Plenty of uh, storage under there, though, to put stuff pretty nice. Then we'll go over here real quick. So they got the co-angler spot for the rods. And then tie down here. This needs to be moved back. I don't know whoever installed that didn't do that right, but um, so strap for your rods too, so they don't go flying out. All right, we will. Might as well just show you the console quick while we're here. We'll flip this around. So just basic. Um, I got a seven-inch helix that goes there. That's out for ice fishing right now. But uh, just your tack, your speedo. And then your engine lights, you know, if you're running low on oil or water is not working, whatever. And then just your basic uh, nav light, your courtesy light, which is that. Village aerator horn. Just all real basic. Alright, so now I'm going to show you the back deck. So, we got uh, your light bulb in the middle and then a couple storage uh, storage bins on the end, so I'll flip this around and it is worth mentioning that these do not have the seal like the other ones did the rubber seal but they're up so that way they should be fine anyway if we're not getting any water in there i haven't had issues with water getting in them so this is a i believe this is a 20 gallon live well so pretty big you got your offset split so definitely need to clean it out it's dirty and then Another big thing on this boat that other boats, like I said, in this price range do not have, which is crazy to me, is insulation, the foam, for helping keep those fish cool. And actually, all these back here have that foam, and that actually helps it seal, too. So, um, there's not too much room in these. I kind of wish they were a little bit bigger, but you can take these, these trays, actually slide out so kind of nice if you have stuff in there want to take it in or take them out and actually you can just it's a little bit bigger and you can put some stuff in there all your wires run down through there so and then it's the same on this side pull this out I can grab it pull it out and you get a little bit more room in there not too much but All right, now we will go to the back, very back. I think that's everything so far. <clears throat> and then I guess it is worth mentioning, I believe there's one on that side too, but it has the flip up anchor tie downs here too. And then I'm not sure if this is on all of them, but for your live while well, your switch is right there by the seat. All right, so. I wish the spec compartment was a little bit bigger too. Um, this boat has a 60 horse on it. It could have up to a 90. This is a HO. So it has the lower end of a 90, but the top end of a 60, it's kind of dumb. Cause you have the weight of a 90, um, if that makes sense. So, and this is a smaller motor and it's a big gas tank. I guess a 90 would take more gas, but it's nice to be able to run forever. So I'll flip this around. We have a 21 gallon gas tank. That's pretty huge. <laughs> it goes up there quite a ways. I wish it was maybe a little bit taller and then, you know, it didn't come back this way as far. So I got three batteries that I put in here now. A fourth sure would be nice. Um, you know, I don't, there's not really room for a fourth because you got your pumps back here, but for this application you know i'm not running a bunch of graphs or anything and my trolling motor is 70 pound thrust on here which moves it plenty good 
So with that being said, I guess I don't run low on power, but I know I'm gonna be adding more stuff to it. I believe that's everything. I'll be adding more stuff to it, so it'd be nice, you know, to be able to add a extra battery versus going uh lithium right away where it's very expensive, but so that is why I would buy an Alumacraft. Just the little features, you know, the watertight um front storage, massive. The you can always have a marina do this too, but just having that on there right away is nice. Um very nice comfy seats. You know, I sat, I sat in there for hours mapping this last fall and they're comfy. So that is a huge plus too. spending a lot of time out on the water. You can see my breath is so cold out here. It's only like 10 degrees right now, but I really wanted to do this video and get it out there. So Alumacraft Pro 175. The front deck, I didn't do this either. I'm going to do this real quick. Let's flip this around before this video is done. All right, so we're going to measure the deck so I can tell you how wide it is. Because this boat is huge in the front and I love it. I love how big the front deck is. Um, probably should just get over. Yeah. Me and my wife both fish uh, on here and there's plenty of room on the front deck. We never have any issues with bumping into each other or just, you know, not having enough room. So it is six feet at the back half here, and then we'll uh, measure the front half before it goes down to the V. And at the front half, <clears throat> controlling motors, pedals in the way. Right. So at the front half, we are about 58, 58 and a half inches, so almost five feet wide up here and then you know you got your area up here too so huge in the front like i said we're both uh, my wife and i both fish up here and there's plenty of room for both of us and you can fit one person in the back and definitely a solid boat so that is why i would say that this is the best boat under twenty thousand dollars you know your watertight compartments you get the foam for the live well it's just the little details, the recess foot pedal, just the little details that um, really make the difference. So that uh, is uh, where I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I hope this video helps you if you're buying a boat or if you were maybe looking at this boat and wanted an overview. Here you go. Thanks for watching.